हेलो मैं डॉक्टर पी डी पंत प्रोफेसर द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ जियोलॉजी उत्तराखंड ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी आपके सामने आज जियोलॉजिकल वंडर्स या पृथ्वी के जो चमत्कार हैं उस पर कुछ बात करने आए हूँ विशेष रूप से हम बोलते हैं टेक्टोनिक्स सेसमोसिटी और रॉक्स के बारे में ये अर्थ के बहुत से वंडर्स हैं जिसके बारे में आम आदमी जानना चाहता है और अधिकतर उत्सुक रहता है इसलिए मैंने आज आपके सामने इस पर बात करने का निर्णय लिया है और सबसे बड़ा आश्चर्य सबसे बड़ा अर्थ के बारे में वॉन्डर्स है द ओरिजिन ऑफ द अर्थ हाउ द अर्थ वॉज ओरिजिनेटेड सो वी नो देयर आर मैनी थ्योरीज बिहाइंड द ओरिजिन ऑफ द अर्थ एंड दिस वॉज ओरिजिनेटेड ऑलमोस्ट फोर पॉइंट फाइव फोर बिलियन ईयर्स बिफोर या चार सौ चौवन करोड़ साल पहले धरती का उदय हुआ सो देर आर मैनी थ्योरीज बिहाइंड ओरिजिन ऑफ द अर्थ एंड फाइनली द मेजोरिटी ऑफ द साइंटिस्ट कम ऑन ए रिजल्ट दैट इज द अर्थ वॉज ओरिजिनेटेड ऑन ए गैसियल टाइडल थ्योरी दैट इज द मोस्ट एक्सेप्टेड थ्योरी ऑन गैसियस टाइडल थ्योरी मीन्स इन द यूनिवर्स देयर वॉज ए ह्यूज मास ऑफ गैसियस मेटीरियल हैविंग डस्ट पार्टिकल्स स्टीम स्मोक एक्सेट्रा एंड दिस वॉज रिवॉल्विंग इन द यूनिवर्स एंड वेन इट पास्ट by the sun so it was stretched away the outer part was stretched away by the sun pulled away and when it was pulled away there got a explosion of the material and am out of this material the large portion they started revolving around the sun and the sm- small parts of that mass started rotating around the big mass and that has given origin to our planets and their moons so these planets are revolving around the sun since their birth because of the gravitational pull of the sun continuously they are rotating or revolving around the sun and also rotating around their own axis so what is the earth as we know the earth has basically three layers just like a egg we know the outermost layer is hard and compact if you go inside then there is a liquidus material if you go further inside the egg we have the yolk which is also semi solid similar is in the case of the earth as well the outer part of the earth which is up to a thickness of th- on an average 35 km that is 5 km below the oceans and 35 km below the continents if you go in the mountains for example at everest so there the thickness will be almost 80 km so this portion of the earth is known as is crust it is hard and compact made up of rocks which includes oceans as well glaciers as well mountains as well so if you go inside right from 35 a kilometer depth to nearly 2700 kilometers we call it the mantle the middle part of the earth where the rocks or the material forming the earth is in the molten condition molten state and it has very high temperature and because of the electromagnetic induction it moves around the or inside the earth in the form of convection currents if you go further inside right from 2700 to the core of the earth so it is also liquid but with a very high t- pressure it behaves like a solid which we call the core of the earth so basically if you see the interior of the earth it has three part outer part is the crust middle part is the mantle if you go further inner part we call it core of the earth so if i you take you inside the earth so what is the temperature also increases with very rapid on the surface of the earth the average temperature is 15 degree centigrade if you go inside nearly 100 km so temperature increases up to 12 180 degree centigrade this is outer mantle if you go further inside up to 2700 km the temperature is 2500 degree 
so very high temperature that's why no rock is in the form of solid there it is molten form and liquid in the form if you go further from 2700 kilometers to 5150 km that is outer core so temperature raises to 400 4800 degree centigrade and if you try to reach to the core of that that is nearly 6370 km so temperature is 6000 degree centigrade so when you probe inside the earth so temperature increases in a rapid way so that's why if you go inside the earth nothing can remain solid it has to get melt because none can retain so much temperature it has to get melt so only the outer surface of the earth which we call crust is the solid made up of variety of rocks oceans and covered in polar area with the ice so what is very important about the earth the oldest mineral which we have recorded which got dated on the earth surface is about to 4.36 billion years means 436 crore saal purana hai rocks kitni purani hai it depend karta hai ki jo rock ko banane wali constituents hain uske andar minerals hote hain usme zircon ek aisa mineral hai jiski hardness bahut zyada hai aur wo bahut high temperature ko retain kar sakta hai aur ar dharti mein sabse lambe samay tak reh sakta hai so therefore after studying the various rocks this is the particular mineral zircon which was uh, recovered and got dated so it has given the date 4.36 billion years based on this that's why we give the age of 4.5 billion year to the earth before this study the oldest dated rock were from a body of rock known at the acasta gneiss in the northwest territory which is 4.3 billion years old okay. american territory hai sabse oldest mineral wahan mila tha but later on the new mineral was discovered zircon at 4.36 billion years if you go in the oceans so we have oldest rock the oldest patch of undistributed oceanic crust on the earth is deep beneath the eastern mediterranean sea and its age is about to 340 million years only so that is very important why the age of the ocean is much younger than the age of the continental crust because of the movement of the continents the older oceans are have been closed and new oceans have been evolved so this is the so far the oldest remaining ocean on the surface of the earth because of continuous movement of the continents so a new ocean always get developed and the older get closed so so far on the surface of the earth the oldest ocean rock is 440 million years old the third very important parameter of the earth is the oldest accepted fossil sabse purana jeevashm dharti mein kaun sa hai to fossils are those from strelly pool in the filbra region of western australia they are stromatolites stromatolites means fossil algae so this is almost 3.4 billion years old so so far this is the oldest fossil recovered from the earth and we know this is a flora rather and the oldest fauna is we know the ediacara which was evolved much later at we can say 570 million years before so so far the oldest fossil on the earth surface is nearly 3.4 billion years old the oldest oceanic crust is 340 million years old and the oldest mineral on the rocks of the crust is 4.36 billion years old so these are three very important data about this earth which are definitely very much surprising to those wish to study the geology or sometime for those are not the student of geology so these three are very important data about our earth and one of the very important wonders of the earth is you know the restless continents means 
the continents are not resting they are moving from one place to other place continuously we know this theory was given by alfred wegener who was basically a meteorologist used to deliver lectures from one continent to other continents multiple time and had a hobby of collecting the rocks and the soils and samples from different continents so when he was doing this exercise so what he found that i am getting similar rock type from one continent to another continent of a particular geological time scale similarly uh, he he says so, said i am getting a particular flora from one continent to other continent which are currently located in the different position of the earth which is not possible because the climatic conditions of each continent is to today different so why these are same fossils recorded from the all continents we can see here for example this green patch which is same fossils are, are available we can see in south america africa antarctica and australia including in india all these continents are today in a different climatic zone so if they are in a different climatical climatic zones so how the same flora can evolve in the all these continents likewise this this is a <coughs> reptile same is found in the south america and in the africa both are in a different climatic zone so how it is possible the same uh, reptile is seen in the both continent like as you can see the big lizard is seen in the africa same in the southern portion of south america so why it is so so after studying all these things what he suggested perhaps all these all these continents were all together at a time later on they have been they have been drifted from one place to other place so that why he says all the continents are restless they are moving from one place to other place and he had given a theory of drifting of continents how the continents are drifting from one place to other place he has given lot of example of that but what is nobody was going to accept this theory because seeing the dimension huge dimension of the continents nobody was believing about that the continents might move like this so till 70s it was ignored but with the evol with evolve of geological sciences likewise this there was many such other queries as well when they decided to fit them they they were not able to fit these stories from all the continents finally they were forced to go to back that move these continents to that particular status of the state of the earth then it was possible that all these things geological processes can occur together so ultimately the modern scientists at the late 70s accepted this drifting of continents and a new theory was propounded that is plate tectonics means the earth is divided in various plates and these plates are moving from one place to other place and the continents are restless so they were sometime all together now they have been drifted maybe in future they may come again all together so since they are drifting from one place to other place so they are shifting from one climatical zone to other climatical zone so that is possible so then the continental drift theory was propounded and in the early part of the uh, we call the 20th century many evidences were recovered many evidences were brought together and finally they decided that this theory of continental drift or plate tectonics is a reality and that has helped geologists to solve many problems so most of these evidences are evidences for continental drift includes fit of the continents distribution of ancient fossils the rocks the mountain ranges and the location of ancient climatic zones and paleo magnetism so these are some of the evidences through which one can prove that the continents are restless and they are drifting from one 
position of the earth to other position so ultimately the question comes from where the force is coming that is drifting this massive huge heavy continents as described earlier if you go inside the crust the mantle of the earth is made up of molten material which is liquidous in nature and the temperature increases from crust to the core up to 6000 degree centigrade so there is a variation in the temperature so there is formation of convection currents within the mantle of the earth and you can imagine the dimension so these convection currents are moving from high temperature zone to low temperature zone to make it uniform since the distance is too big so they are unable to make it uniform and there is a continuous movement of the convection currents so when these currents collides with the crust of the earth so sometime they these two currents when they are moving away from each other they break the continents and after breaking down the continents they they move them away from each other just like a conveyor belt or sometime these two convection currents may come towards each other so when they comes towards each other they bring two continents together and the continent gets compressed and there is a development of a positive relief of the mountains and sometime these currents may pass from each other literally when they pass literally each other they can also form large cracks on the surface and the continents may move literally as well so basically there are three such movements recorded on the earth surface and these are the result of the movement of these large convection currents evolving inside the mantle of the earth so the best example is you know the the best fit of the continents so when you see the modern continents if you consider it as a puzzle if you go back to fit them so you will find they fit so nicely with each other it appears once they were a single mass and later what they got teared off and drifted from away from each other so we so we can see here as well when this was the condition where we can see the american continents south american continents we can see the antarctica the africa all these were all together so we call this type of continent a we know the pangaea the single con there was a single continent on the earth a huge mass which was covering all these continents and the scientists have given the name pangaea and obviously there has to be one single ocean and the single ocean then was known as the panthalassa so initially there was only one continent and there was only one ocean later on because of the impact of this convection currents these continents were broken down and they got moved away from each other and which proves that the continents are drifting from uh, uh, drifting away from each other and they are forming some new continents and sometime some uh, continents are being closed as well and simultaneously there will be formation of new oceans and the older oceans will be closed down so that's why the oceans are much younger than the continents other is distribution of ancient fossils so geologists have recovered very ancient fossils particularly you can see the example of dinosaurs etc we have these huge very popular fossil flora fossil and we have these all dinosaurs reptiles from the earth so what is seen this particular reptile is seen its evidences are available right from south america to africa even up to the north so today if you see the south america is very far from from to africa so such huge bodied animal those were dwelling dwelling on the continents they can't move from one continent to other continent because in between there is a large ocean and they can't live in the ocean they live in the hot humid climate of the continents so how it is possible that they are found from this age to this area so it is only possible if you bring africa and south america together then they can move from one end to another end so this is one possibilities similarly we can see the other fossils you can see this particular fossil we can see this flora gondwana flora it is seen in australia same is antarctica similar in southern india same fossil in africa and same 
climatic zone in the south america so it means at this period when this gondwana flora was on the was on the surface of the earth flourishing the all these continents were in the same climatical zone today all these are in the different climatical zone and today we don't have same flora all different flora similarly we can see other reptiles they are seen like this so the distribution of very ancient fossil also gives clues to that the continents are certainly drifting other is you can see the rock type so same rocks are seen you can see in the western part of the america and you can see this is also in european countries similarly you can see in the south and we can see in arabian as well africa as well we can see in the arabian continent as well so why the same rocks are seen in this area and for the formation of the rocks we need similar geological conditions we need similar river system we need similar igneous activities etc so why how it is possible these all continents which are today in the different climatical zone on the different uh, position of the earth can have the same rock type so when i push them back bring their we can say as as all together they get combined with each other so when they get combined with each other then i see oh, okay there is a continuation of this rock to this area this rock to this area all this continent from one to another continent it means when these particular rocks were under formation these continents were all together they were not so far as they are seen today similarly if you come to the mountain ranges of the world the example is taken from you can see this is antarctic ocean atlantic ocean sorry so we can see this is the northern america we have the africa and we have the europe so if you see the mountain ranges on this part of this american continents up to greenland and this part of the african and european continents they are the same the ranges are same means their alignment in the same directions their rock type are also similar sometimes the fossils are also similar however if you see today they live they occur in the different climatical zone so how it is possible so similar means when these mountain ranges were under formation all these continents were at the similar point so means these african european part of the continents were very close to america and that's why when there was a compression in between these two these mountain ranges were formed later on because of drifting of the continents both the continents have moved away from each other other very important evidences the similar climate zone paleo climate so when we people today study the paleo climate of the earth so what we get if i see the rocks of the this this portion you can see southern america southern africa southern india antarctica and southwest australia they also there was a period when all these were in the glacial condition permian period in permian period of geological time scale they all were covered by the glacier but how it is possible today if you see in africa we don't have glacier today even south india we don't have any glacier today in western australia we don't have any glacier even in southern we don't have any glacier so it glacial means very cold climate in antarctica we have today so how it is possible it means it is only possible when we bring all these continents very close to polar area it means when these rocks were under formation there was a very cold climatic zone that continents were in the southern part very close to southern pole close to antarctica the rock types so if you see even the these tundra type of climate green so we have here palm trees we have hot humid climate etc all fossil type fauna and flora are seen there so if you see today they are not in the same climate zone they all are in the different climate zone though presently but if you see the rocks of the particular age in the earth so you will find they all are of the same age so when you want to make them the same age so we have to bring to to these all the continents to that particular climatic zone which is existing today on the globe 
so when you bring all together so the shape of the continents becomes like this so it means at this particular age when we have we can see this entire uh, distribution of continents like this so uh, we uh, we all can assume this was the climatical zone because later on because of the drifting of the continents these all continents have been moved away from each other but the rocks those were formed then the time have the signatures of that climate that is of paleo climate so when we study the paleo climate so we can suggest what was the climate of a particular rock type in a particular age on the earth so this if you study the paleo climate this also suggests that the continents are drifting from one place to other place once the continents were in a particular climate zone now because of movement of the continents drifting of the continents their climate zone has been changed and they are occurring in the different portions of the earth other very important example is paleo magnetism paleo magnet means we know the earth has a magnetic property is poles or at the core of the earth we have a magnetic property it is a magnetic pole having northern and southern poles so whenever any metallic mineral any magnetic mineral is being deposited or is being forming on the surface of the earth it gets acquainted with the magnetic property of that particular condition later on the rock or the sediment get preserved becomes hard and the magnetic property is preserved there if because of the drifting of the continents the rock or the continents is displaced to some some to other area so what is its magnetism won't be fit with the current position of the globe so if you see the magnetism of that particular rock you will see its orientation is totally different than what was supposed to be at that particular position so it shows the magnetic nature of this particular rock is not supporting whatever is the current position of the continent so if you know what is the nature of the magnetism of the metallic mineral in this rock so if you go back and bring that that particular rock to that position which fits to the magnetic property of the earth so you will find okay at this particular time when this rock was under formation then the position of the continent was not this it was at that part of the earth because the magnetic properties of the magnetic mineral fits with this position of the earth not with the current position of the continents so paleo magnetism is one of the very important tool which suggests us whether the continents are resting at the one position or they are restless or they are moving from one point to another point so what i can say these were the evidences have suggested have proof ya strengthen further the theory of the alfred wegener later on highly supported by john deby in early 70s given the theory of plate tectonics so drifting of continents was changed to plate tectonics and which suggests that the continents are moving continuously from one position to another position and they are restless so what we can see just 200 million year before all continents were all together we call it the pangaea nearly 135 million year before they were broken down in two mega pieces one is in the northern piece other is the southern piece so the northern uh, partition is known as we we we, we can say laurasia and the southern particle uh, part is known as gondwana land you know the gondwana and laurasia means the northern globe northern continents currently occurring in the northern globe were all together known as laurasia and the continent today which are in the southern globe were all together known as gondwana okay and in between there was a ocean which we call the tethys ocean and the outsider ocean was the panthalas ocean so if you come 35 million years before it was just like this before evolution of the himalaya so we can see all the continents have moved further up from southern portion gondwana land the africa has moved up from here you can see gondwana land 
साउथ अमेरिका हैज़ मूव टू द वेस्टर्न साइड नॉर्थन अमेरिका हैज़ ऑल्सो मूव टू वेस्टर्न साइड इंडिया हैज़ मूवड फ्रॉम साउथ टूवर्ड्स नॉर्थ एंड लेटर ऑन कोलाइडिंग विथ वट यू कॉल द एशियन कॉन्टिनेंट्स लाइक वाइज एंटार्टिका हैज़ गॉन टू साउथ ऑस्ट्रेलिया हैज़ मूव टू द ईस्टर्न साइड एंड दिस इज प्रजेंटली वट इज एक्चुअली सीन हि एंड इफ यू इमेजन वट विल हैपन आफ्टर टू हंड्रेड एट्टी मिलियन ईयर्स अगेन ऑल कॉन्टिनेंट्स विल बी ऑल टूगेदर एंड अमेसिया विल बी दैन अमेसिया मीन्स द अमेरिकन कॉन्टिनेंट एशियन कॉन्टिनेंट्स ऑल विल बी ऑल टूगेदर एंड द नेम टू दैट अर्थ या कॉन्टिनेंट इज प्रपोज अमेसिया सो फार सो आफ्टर टू हंड्रेड एट्टी मिलियन ईयर्स अगेन द अर्थ विल बी लाइक दिस ऑल द कॉन्टिनेंट्स विल बी ऑल टूगेदर सो the boundaries of these we call the continents which is marked here by red part is the plate boundaries so they are moving from one portion to another portion just like something is kept on a plate and you are moving plate from one place to another place so this is known as plate tectonics tectonics means movement of the continents so they are moving just like a plate and we call it plate tectonics other very important parameter was yeah very strange is the emergence and evolution of mountains i have given the example of himalaya so as you know the continents are since continents are moving from one place to another place similarly india was moving from south to the northern portion you can see at different age type the position is given at 70 million year before we are here but when we collided like here 10 million year before so there was emergence of a small relief on the northern portion of the india and we can see it collision was just like this one continent collided with the other continent and whatever material was in between them was thrown up formed a range of the mountains and this mountain is formed there which we can see right from here entire himalayan mountain since this mountain is most of the part of this mountain at the higher elevation is covered with the snow ice that's why we call it himalaya because i see in hindi is not a him so we call himalaya so right himalaya means the big mountain chain is starts from western part of the india it goes to eastern part of the assam but if you see actually the mountain chain this himalayan mountain chain is starts from spain in the europe and ends in the fiji in the australian in pacific ocean so it is a big mountain chain between the continents so if you see these ridges these blue lines dark blue light blue lines these are actually the margin of these plates along which these continents are moving away from each other so you can see this specific plate is moving upward forming this mark mountains there you can see this indian australian plate is moving northward they are colliding here we can say here fiji here new zealand jakarta here with asia so we have the himalayan mountains you can see okay that's why we have only seven plates all over the globe and the theory we call it the plate tectonics along these plates are moving one uh, from one place to another place i sometime they are colliding same time they are going away from each other sub sometime they are moving lateral to each other so very important other is the causes of the tectonic movement i have already described the movement of this tectonics a movement drifting of the continents is led by convection currents those evolve from the mantle of the earth and they collide with the crust of the continent and because of breaking down fracturing down cracking down of the rocks of the crust it moves from one place to other place and which takes finally to the movement of the continents drifting of the continents or gives birth to the theory of plate tectonics so these are the various type of movements already shown in this in this diagram one can say those are going away from each other then we call them convergent when they come towards each other we call them divergent and when they move away from each other we call them transform type of movement so in general there are three type of movements because waves may go away from each other they may come towards each other and they may pass parallel to each other so other very important is when these plate moves like away from each other they generally cracks make fracture on the surface of the earth so when these fractures are developed sometime it takes time and sometime they suddenly appear when these fractures which we call faults ya usko bhrans bolte hain when they 
develop on the rocks of the earth so what is there is there is a sudden shaking on the surface this sudden shaking this sudden fracturing of the rocks is known as a fault and because of the faulting shaking takes place and this shaking of the surface or rocks is known as earthquakes so the movement of the continents the movement of the plates along the plate boundaries they give origin to these faults and when there is a sudden movement around the faults is shows formation of earthquakes yeah seismic waves so when you put a seismograph in such a area where these positions are located so what we see continuously the earthquake are occurring and they may be recorded by the seismograph so that's why the margin of these plates are very prone to earthquakes so you can see this map this is showing how many earthquakes have occurred in the last century from 1900 to 2017 we can say so many earthquakes and there are very major earthquakes 1 2 3 4 which are more than 9 in the richter scale huge earthquake and we can see the distribution cluster of the earthquake is always in the plate boundaries you can see right from here it is to the plate boundaries so along the plate boundaries where the continents are colliding with each other we have accumulation of stress and this stress burst in the form of faults fracturing give birth to the earthquakes so this is a map of india which is showing the distribution of earthquake what is the possibility of occurrence of the earthquake so in himalayan regions are known for major earthquakes five plus and if you go the blue portion it is for the earthquake less than we can say three micro seismic zone and we have the major earthquake region in the bhuj in the assam in the jammu himachal uttarakhand and the southern nepal so if you see the in the earth are very important is generally we have three type of rocks major rocks is the igneous rocks means rocks those are formed by the molten earth so when earth molten material comes on the surface of the earth it gets solidified and these rocks are known as igneous rock हम उनको आग्नेय सेल भी कहते हैं क्योंकि वो आग की तरह जलती हुई चट्टानों के ठंडे होने से बनी है और जब इन ठंडे चट्टानों के ऊपर पानी आ जाता है नदियाँ आ जाती हैं रेनफॉल होता है सो दे इरोड दीज इग्नियस रॉक्स एंड दे ब्रिंग डाउन टू द सेडिमेंट्री रॉक्स बाय द सेडिमेंट्स अलॉन्ग द रिवर जस्ट वी हैव द मॉडर्न रिवर गंगा यमुना बरहपुत्र ब्रह्मपुत्रा दे कैरी द सेडिमेंट टू द ओशन दैट सेडिमेंट गेट्स डिपॉजिट इन द डीप डिप्रेशन और बिग ओशंस when they finally they form a rock this rock is known as sedimentary rock jisko hum avsadi shale bhi bolte hain and teesri tarah ki jo chattane hoti hain unko bolte hain metamorphic rock ya kayantrik chattana so kayantrik rock means one sediment is being deposited over another sediment it takes millions millions of year so the older sediment which is deposited at the base get under a very high pressure very high temperature it changes the form it changes the formation of the minerals it changes the mineral chemistry and everything is changed there or this rock type is known as a metamorphic rock so this diagram is showing how the igneous rocks can be formed so igneous rock means the lava is coming from the mantle fracturing the crust surface and reaching to the surface of the earth so that cools down inside the earth is known as granite ya batholith that comes on the surface is known as volcanic rocks ya jwalamukhi rocks usko bolte hain so if you see this very big map of india so we have the biggest igneous rock found large chunks is found is ladakh region ladakh granitoid ladakh granite we can see it in this area huge part of the northern part of himalaya we have all these granites huge granites we can see here as well in karakoram granites ladakh granites and these are some fig photographs taken from the fields and granite is a very good building stones we all know everywhere we use the granite on the flooring to make it as a decorative stones so these are also found in himalaya as well and maybe in southern india as well so since my latest visit was in the ladakh area for field work so i took this example from there so this is how the volcanic rocks evolved means when these igneous material comes out of the earth crust forms we call fragmented uh, or lava or uh, we call sometime gaseous material it forms on the surface of the earth the rocks formed by them are known as volcanic rocks and the final product is the basalt so they are they get oxidized because of the inter contact of the oxygen 
so generally they are they are dark colored we call them volcanic rocks so we can see we have lot of volcanic rocks volcanic rocks are always seen in the nearby area in the bhimtal we call them bhimtal volcanic rocks i have taken this example from you can see from dras from kargil all these area uh, everywhere we have the volcanic rocks as well but this example are more exciting so i have given you these two examples of volcanic rocks and this is the example of you know the sedimentary rock means when the sediment is being carried by the river and going to the ocean get deposited there so layer by layer get deposit and we call them sedimentary rocks they are layered and definitely they show involvement of the water and with the action of the water and you can see when they are total, uh, currently present on the surface of the earth they are such type of layered rock and we call them sedimentary rock and finally the rock types are the metamorphic rocks means rocks don't get buried at the deeper part because of the high pressure high temperature of the overlying rocks they get recrystallized everything is rearranged their layers are changed their composition is changed their minerals are changed generally they are very hard and compact and they have basically elongated minerals and such rocks are known as metamorphic rocks and this is a chart which is showing how the a sedimentary rock ya igneous rocks changes to metamorphic rock so if a rock is on the top surface of the earth top surface of the earth we call them shale as we go inside the earth it changes finally to the nice when temperature and pressure becomes very high similarly other very big wonder about this is how these rocks get folded must have seen while walking along the roads while climbing the hills these type of structures who have folded these rocks very thick rocks very hard and compact rocks sometime entire mountains are folded how it is possible so for folding the rocks again the plate tectonics is responsible when continents come close to each other they compress the material when they compress this material all the layer get folded likewise the iron rod if you compress a iron rod from both end the rod get folded so similarly this pressure the plate tectonics a movement of two continents towards each other has folded these rocks and we get beautiful folds on the surface as well that's all from my side this was my attempt just to acquaint you about some very interesting wonders of the geology on the globe thank you